Hello and welcome back. In this session, we're going to talk about the Lightning App Builder. The Lightning App Builder is used to customize the visual appearance of Salesforce. You can drag and drop components onto pages. You can configure those components so they're dynamic, so they only show under certain conditions. And then you can also add and remove actions. The actions as well can be made dynamic. So again, they only show when a certain criteria is met. And then once you're happy with your Lightning App page, you can then assign it. So you can assign it to an org, to a profile, to a record page, to an app. There's quite a few options. There's also the option of dynamic forms, but these are only available on custom objects. And they just allow us to really control what fields are going on a page using the Lightning App Builder rather than page layouts. As I mentioned before, the Lightning App Builder can be used to create a couple of types of pages, such as app pages, home pages, and record pages. But for now, let's head into Salesforce and let's see how it works. So here we are in Salesforce. And before I show you the Lightning App Builder in depth, I just want to stress something to you. And that's the difference between Lightning Record Pages and Page Layouts. Page Layouts control what you see on the related list. So they control what related lists are visible. And they also control what fields you see as well. The Lightning Record page is the user interface that we see with the highlight panel, with the tabs, and with the components. To edit the Lightning Record page, all we need to do is hit the gear icon and just hit Edit Page. From here, we can easily drag and drop components onto the page to customize it. And there's a huge range of components available. As you can see as we scroll down here, there's an awful lot of them there. There's also the option to add custom components, and that might be to extend the functionality of Salesforce where you think it might be lacking. And that's where the App Exchange comes into place. Now, if you do want to move components around the page, it's dead easy. You just drag and you drop them around your page. Let me just get rid of that pop-up. And you just drag and drop them around your page like that. And it's dead easy to do that. You can also delete them just by hitting the delete button in the top right-hand corner. Now, if you do want to customize a component, you can do that too. You simply just click on the component like we're already on here and it'll appear in the right hand side of your screen. So if I delete that and I click on the highlight panel, you'll see that we can start customizing the highlight panel as well. So while we have the highlight panel details up, I just want to quickly tell you about dynamic actions. And as we know, object specific quick actions are in the top right hand of our highlights panel. So what we see here with edit, new case and new note. Now, we could set these as dynamic actions, meaning that they're only going to show when a certain criteria has been met. And we just use filters to set the criteria. For example, we may only want the new opportunity action to appear if the account type is a customer account. If the account type was a supplier, we might not want to be able to see that action. It's all about providing the user with a clean and easy to use interface. So let's upgrade to dynamic actions and just walk through one. So I'm just going to upgrade to it. I'm going to set it as migrate and I'm just going to hit next. I need to pick the page layout I want to pull it from, which is the opportunity layout. And then what you can see, if I click on log a call, is I can actually add a filter. So I can choose what field has to be what. I could choose the operator and then I can also set the value. But I can do that by device and through advanced as well. So there's quite a few options for this as well. So I'll just click done. And you can see that is exactly how dynamic actions work. But just as we can create dynamic actions, we can also create dynamic components. And all we need to do with that is control the component visibility. And again, it's just like we've done with our dynamic actions. We can add a filter and then we just need to choose what this criteria needs to be in order to show that component. Now, I'm just going to hit done and I'm just going to cancel out of that. Once we're happy with what we've created, we can then click save. And then when we click save, we then need to look at who we're going to assign it to or how we're going to activate it. So if I hit activate here, it's then going to activate this as a page that I can then assign. And when it comes to assigning Lightning Record pages, we have a few options. We can either assign it as an org default, meaning that everyone's going to see it and everyone will use it. We could set it as an app default, which means it's going to be assigned as an app default. So, you know, an app is going to use this rather than the org default. And then we can set it as app record type and profiles. And that's where we get really granular. But what we're going to do is we're just going to come out of that. So I'm just going to hit X and I want to show you this path component here. 
Now, this is really important because it's really powerful for your users. And what this path component is, is a visual representation of the current stage of the opportunity. Now, just like anything else in Salesforce, it can be completely customized to follow a different pick list. You can also display key values using it and you can provide guidance for success. But for now, I just want you to know that it's a visual representation of the opportunity stage. Paths also exist for leads and they can be created for any object, but they are really useful for cases because they help you understand the case status. And it just shows you the process that you need to work through to well, achieve success. For the next part, I want to show you dynamic forms, but they're only available on custom objects not standard objects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of there, I'm going to hit back, and then I'm just going to open up a custom object I created earlier on called properties. So if I open up properties and I open up Shakespeare's house, what I'm going to do is go to the gear icon and I'm going to hit edit page, and that's going to open up our lightning app builder again. Now, as you can see, this looks very similar to what we had earlier on. The only difference is we have fields here. So this is what a dynamic form encompasses. It means we can drag a field section on here and we can add whichever fields we want to whichever sections we have. There's loads of different things that we can do with this. And the whole idea behind this is just to display the right information at the right time. So what I mean by that is we can add filters again so we can do all that. And that's going to allow us to get rid of multiple page layouts and to add fields wherever we want on a page. So this is going to be a big game changer when this comes into Salesforce and it's already out there for custom objects and it's going to be available for standard objects soon or so we've been told. We've also been told that dynamic forms are going to improve loading times too. So before we move on from the Lightning App Builder, I want to show you the three types of pages we can create with it. So I'm just going to hit the back icon here, I'm going to hit leave and then I'm just going to go into setup. And in the quick find search bar, I'm going to type in lightning and I'm going to open up lightning app builder and I'm just going to hit new. And what you'll see here is that we can actually create three types of lightning pages. We can create app pages, which is just a one page app for Salesforce lightning and the mobile app. We could create home pages, which is the default page we see when we click home. And then we can also create a record page and I just want to take a second here just to clarify that when it comes to page layouts, there are two parts, lightning record pages and the actual page layout. Speaking of which, let's have a recap of the lightning app builder and then we're going to move on to page layouts. So as we've seen, the lightning app builder is used to customize a page's visual appearance. We can drag and drop components on and off the page. We can delete them and we can also set the component visibility, turning them into pretty much dynamic components. We've got actions as well that we can upgrade to dynamic actions. And then again, those dynamic actions are only shown when a certain criteria is met. For all lightning pages, we can choose the assignment and we have it from the top as an org default and an app default all the way through to getting really granular looking at regular at record types and profiles. We also have the option of dynamic forms, but these are only available for custom objects only, and they just allow us to display the right information at the right time. When it comes to lightning pages, there's three types that we can create. We can create a one page app for Salesforce lightning and the mobile app. We could create home pages and we can also create lightning record pages. 